Welcome into another edition of The Butcher versus the Spin Instructor presented by LB's Meat Market. It is New Year's Eve. We have, we're hours away from being able to put 2020 behind us and uh, say it's over, say we survived it. Never been happier to see a year go away, though. I will say it's been a fun year. Doing this has been part of the fun of 2020, so it hasn't not been all bad. So hello to Greg. Hello to Campbell. How are you all? Good. Great. Ready for 2021. Yep. Yes, sir, for sure. Um, all right, so uh, we'll, we'll get started in a second. This is brought to you by LB's Meat Market. LB's located uh, on is 2008 University Avenue, right across from, uh, from Kroger. Don't go to Kroger for your meat. Go to Kroger, get some of your other stuff, get your, get your hair products or whatnot, get your, get, your, uh, get your paper towels. But Go to LB's for your meat. You'll be glad you did. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Campbell can attest to this. So at Christmas, Greg, we had – we had two beef tenderloins. We had one that uh, we had someone had, I guess my mother had purchased at, at Kroger and we froze it. And so I went and thawed it out and we had one from LB's and the difference was night and day. It was one was one was fine. One was fantastic. I'll let you determine which one was fantastic. It was, and it was the one from LB's. Um, it was great. So we had uh, we had a lot of LB's. We had the uh, spicy ribeye with uh, Jardin. Jardin. Not, Gard- not gardenia that's the, that's a bush in, in, uh, that grows in the in the yard but uh jardinier yeah i think i think rizzo had some gardenia uh on that. <laughs> 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 but jardinier uh, i gotta tell you so we've had this conversation over the past few weeks about the jardinier as uh the people at lbs of greg and them have added it to their um uh, to their sausages i've long been a chicken jalapeno guy Greg knows that. I come in if it's there. That's that's mine. I love it. They added the jardinier to the chicken jalapeno, and I was like, oh, winner. And then I had it with uh, with the lamb, and I thought, oh, this is really close. And then they put it in the spicy ribeye, and that's the new leader in the clubhouse. I mean, don't tell the chicken jalapeno that I feel that way. But Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it's just that, like I said, that Jardinier is just, you know, a game changer. It's not, you know, it's not hot, but it's just, it, you know, actually it is hot, you know, just separate on a sandwich. But when it gets cooked down and the meat and everything it just blends in perfect. We're actually, um, next week we're going to do a uh, spicy muffalata summer sausage. So we're going to do a pork, the olive salad, and uh, we're getting some high temperature pepper jack cheese to go in with that olive salad so uh we'll see we'll see how that turns out but uh we just did the uh summer sausage with the hot jardinier and uh cheese and uh it's uh it's pretty strong like you were saying we also got some scallops from lb's that they're it's it's more than just meat at lb's they got the fish and, and we got some scallops and uh i think that was campbell's favorite part yes definitely they were so good just all i did was i got a I had my grill, so I, what, what I did with the beef tenderloin, Greg, was I did the reverse sear for the first time ever. I, I got it seasoned, just a little oil, salt, pepper. I did, a, I did a salt brine for about 28 hours. Okay. Big difference. I'll, I, I would recommend that forward. So I did the, the – I put the plate setter on the big green egg. I got it to about, I don't know, 250, 275. It was in that range. And I – Got it until it got to about 115, 116, 117 internal. Took it off, took the plate setter off, put the grates on, got the grill super hot. And I went ahead and put the cast iron on the grill. And I, all I did was I just took a piece of bacon and threw it in there. Not really for the bacon itself, but just it was, I wanted it to get hot enough to where it would fry a piece of bacon. And, um, and then the, that left a little bacon residue for the scallops all the better. But I seared, this, I seared the meat the tenderloins to 130, 131, took them off, let them rest. And then I put the scallops in on that hot. I took, uh, the, took the bacon out. I had the, I had the, had the skillet super hot. One minute, flip them, one minute, get them off. Yeah. I mean, those scallops, a lot of people are, you know, uh, get worried about cooking scallops. I mean, you know, scallops, you can, you just, it takes about one or two minutes, depending on how hot your skillet is. But, um, you know, just uh, whenever you get a hot skillet like that and you just sear them on each side, you know, you can throw uh, some butter in there and just let the butter the butter uh, melt in it. And, I mean, it's uh, perfect every time. Yeah, big fan. So, uh, New Year's rolling around. What, what you got What you got planned for the New Year? 
Well, I mean, we're going to be open today. Uh, we'll be open from 10 to 2. Um, we're just, uh, we're, I just, I say 10 to 2 uh, just to, you know, have a cutoff time. But if there's people still coming in at 2.15, 2.30, uh, I'll stay open. We just got a truck today, so we'll be fully stocked. Uh, we won't be running out of anything uh, uh, particular soon. We were closed uh, this Monday just strictly because we uh, – it only had a truck one time last week and we were out of a lot of things. So we just, uh, I took the, um, the judgment of being a local business and, uh, you know, closed up for the day. And then we got a truck this Tuesday and we're stocked back up. Uh, we, I've got plenty of beef tenderloins, uh, plenty of lane trains, plenty of ribeyes. Uh, I'm going to run a T-bone and porterhouse, uh, steak for two. It's a two inch cut, about a 38 ounce steak. It's a real good, uh, perfect for two. I mean, well, actually it could be for three. It's a two pound steak. So, um, you know, if, uh, if y'all, if you can knock out two pounds of meat, you know, between two people, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty strong, but, uh, it's a $2 off on those porterhouses. Uh, Zach's going to be doing some ground beef and, uh, we did the, uh, hot jardin air with the spicy, uh, uh, with the, uh, spicy ribeye. And he also did it with the chicken jalapeno today. So we've got, uh, two different types. We got the chicken spinach feta, chicken jalapeno with jardin air, and then the two spicy, the r- regular ribeye, spicy ribeye, and then of course the Swayze sausages. You know we have to have that. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, we're stocked up, ready to go, and um, you know, uh, going to be closed on New Year's Day to uh, press the reset button and enjoy some football and uh, not work, and then we'll be open back up on Saturday at ten and uh, be ready to go for the weekend. You a big New Year's Eve person, or you, you stay up and watch the ball? You know, I, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, people ask me what I did for Christmas, and my mom wanted me to come down to Madison and uh, visit my family and everything, and I was just like, look, I'm going to sit on my couch, and I'm going to play the quiet game until about 3 o'clock, and then I'll try to talk to somebody at 3 o'clock. So uh, it was just – it's uh, whenever you're uh, in the retail business and you talk to people, you know, as a as a living, you know, it's just almost uh, you get a day and you just play the quiet game and, put, and press the refresh button. So tomorrow, uh, tonight, I'm probably going to uh, get off work and uh, I, uh, Brian Scott Rippey's in town and I told him that I'd come and have a, a drink with him and then uh, get to Como and uh, uh, get on that couch and uh, see, uh, just, you know, enjoy some me time. Campbell, I'm sure you have a very quiet evening playing, uh, ringing in the New well, Year's. Day, right? actually, actually, I kind of did because all my like college friends, they're on trips right now besides Parker. So we were unable to meet up like everyone else is right now. But I'm hanging out with like three of my high school friends. But we're not doing anything crazy. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. So uh, well, last week. We took last week off, but two two weeks ago, the last weekend of the regular season, we uh, we picked nine games. Here's the good news, Greg: you won. Mm. The bad news, Greg, is that both of you had losing records, so you didn't gain a lot of ground. You, you picked up one game on Campbell. You went four and five last week or two weeks ago. Campbell, you went three and six. Greg, for the season, is now fifty one and fifty six. Campbell is uh, sixty-eight and thirty-nine. So you've uh, you've pulled within seventeen games. You've you've closed a game uh, as we head into the bowls. The season's not over. We're gonna, we're gonna Campbell doesn't even know this, but we'll, we'll we'll pick start starting yeah next weekend. Wow, we'll be picking NFL playoff games. Oh lord. Yeah, yeah. So you got to change. I'm really, gonna, I'm really gonna have to do my research here. You, oh yeah. You've got a chance, Greg, to close some ground. You're going to have to sweep pretty much the NFL playoffs, but you got a shot. <laughs> well, if I sweep the bowls and I sweep the NFL, you know, I just got a really good feeling about it. You know, that is true. <laughs> that is true. All right, so we'll start with uh, we'll start with the games. There's one game today. There would have been two games today. Arkansas was supposed to play in the Texas Bowl tonight, but uh, TCU got uh, got COVID, and TCU had to bail. So there is no uh, Texas Bowl, so Arkansas season ends without a bowl game, which is unfortunate for them because I think those kids had stayed in Fayetteville through the holidays. They didn't, they didn't go home for Christmas. They didn't go home. They stayed up there. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> if you don't, if if no part of you has some some uh, empathy for the uh, for the Razorbacks, that's you 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 should check yourself because that's rough. They gave up their Christmas holiday and trained. To have the game canceled literally 
minutes before they were going to get on the bus and go to the airport. Oh. That sucks. <laughs> It was about like last year when LSU was literally on the bus coming to Oxford to play in the in the uh, that weekend, and uh, they literally like like all right, everybody off the bus. Yeah, season's over. Season's over. Crazy, what a crazy year! All right, so we've got the uh, the Armed Forces Bowl. This is in Fort Worth, Texas. This is today as we tape this on uh, New Year's Eve. This is an 11 a.m. game. So by the time you see this, this game's probably going to be kicked off. It's Tulsa versus Mississippi State. Tulsa is a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, Greg, I'm going to give you the opportunity to chase today if you like, so I'll make Campbell go first on, on uh, these bowl games. So we've got the, uh, the Armed Forces Bowl, Campbell. I know you've got everything ready to go up there, so you can watch it here in a minute. Tulsa and Mississippi State, the Golden Hurricane, a two-and-a-half-point favorite. What, what do you think? Um, well, I picked Tulsa before because your cousin, Mike Neal, is, that, is it your cousin? Yeah, first cousin. Um, he lives in Tulsa, so, you know, I'm going to stick with that. Usually me picking based off people, I know it works, so that's what I'm going with. Yeah, Mike is the president of the Tulsa Chamber of Commerce, as a matter of fact, so he's he's, he's big in Tulsa. Greg, what do you think? She's got Tulsa lay in the two and a half. Yeah, I'm not going to chase on this game. I just I think Tulsa's the better club. I mean, they've had a really good year, and, um, um, you know, who, who knows what state team's going to show up. But I think Tulsa's a pretty decent club, and I like it a lot. I like I, – I, I, we're going to go with Tulsa on this one. Okay. Both Tech and Tulsa. It's the only game today, uh, the only game we're picking. I think it's the only game. I don't know. Teach me. I can't keep up with all the bowl games this year and cancellations and stuff. Four games we're picking tomorrow. Uh, New Year's Day, starting with the Peach Bowl in uh, in Atlanta. It's Cincinnati and uh, Georgia. Cincinnati's a seven-point underdog, so Georgia's giving seven points in Atlanta versus the Bearcats. Campbell, what do you think? Um, I'm just going to go with Georgia because I don't know anything about Cincinnati, honestly. That's that's really what I'm going with here. Okay, it's fair. Okay. That's fair, yeah. I mean, you know, we're we're not questioning uh, uh, questioning her. Uh, uh, you know, I like Cincinnati here. I think uh, you know they uh, got a little bit more to prove. I mean, what does Georgia have to prove? Uh, but uh, Cincinnati's a decent uh, club. Uh, I kind of feel bad for them that they uh, missed out on the playoff. But I think it would have been a perfect year to add a couple extra teams in the playoff, and you know, um, say throw Cincinnati against, uh, you know, an Ohio State and let Oklahoma play a, um, a um, Clemson and, or, you know, and just kind of – but it was, a, it was a good year to take advantage of a weird year and, you know, adding a couple uh, games to the playoff system. But I like Cincinnati uh, real well. They're, they're, they're coached real well, and I think uh, – actually, I think they'll win the game. Yeah, I asked Lane Kiffin yesterday. As a matter of fact, I'll say, you know, never asked you this. What you, you've been when he was at Alabama? Obviously, he was involved in the playoff every year. And I said, what are your thoughts about the playoff? Is four the right number? And he said, no, we should go to eight. Eight's the eight's the right number. And I think he's right. This would have been a, a year where Cincinnati would have had a shot. Yeah. And I, we'd all be we'd all be interested in seeing Cincinnati get the shot. You know, and a lot of people would cheer for them because they'd be Cinderella. Yeah. And, You'd get a shot. You get a look at them. I mean, they'd probably be the six or the seven seed, so they'd be playing a Clemson or an Ohio State. And I mean, who wouldn't want to watch a Cincinnati Ohio State game? What a big game that would be for Cincinnati, and 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 what yeah. an opportunity that would be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Cincinnati's coach is a former Ohio State assistant, so I mean, you know, that's uh, that would add add some more um, icing to that cake. But I wish they took advantage of it and you know added an extra uh, couple of games because. You know, I remember that Boise State, Oklahoma, the Statue of Liberty to, you know, to win the game. I don't think if Boise State wins that game uh, that year that we never even consider a Cincinnati in the playoff or something like that. So, um, you know, like I said, just a good time to pull the trigger on uh, four extra games. But, you know, but um, feel bad for the Cincinnati team because uh, they, you know, undefeated in their conference and, um, you know, get snipped, snipped out. Agreed. All right, we go to uh, – to- the second game tomorrow, that's Auburn and Northwestern. This is the Citrus Bowl in uh, Orlando, their Camping World Stadium. Auburn is a three-and-a-half-point underdog against the Wildcats, the Wildcats uh, losers of the Big Ten title game to Ohio State. Campbell, what do you think? Um, well, I'm pretty sure I picked Auburn quite frequently because I toured Auburn. Right. I'm not sure if I've ever picked against Auburn, honestly. So even though they hired a new coach, I know 
I'm going to go with Auburn just because I'm sticking with my college tour picks that seem to work. It, not bucking the system. Uh, uh, Auburn hired uh, Brian Harson from Boise State. Brian Harson will not be coaching this game. Instead, it's Kevin Steele, who some people think was behind the coup to get Gus Malzahn. So there's there's a lot of drama, as usual, at Auburn going into a bowl game. What do you think, Greg? I like Northwestern. I think this is the game to chase on. Um, you know, Northwestern's a well-coached team and, uh, you know, kind of – uh, gave Ohio State a scare there, you know, for three and a half, three quarters. And uh, they're not a bad club. They can, you know, control, uh, play good defense and, you know, they run uh, run a conservative offense. But just don't think uh, Auburn's, uh, you know, uh, all the pieces are uh, together right now. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll go with the better coach team. I, I like Northwestern. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, by the way. I think Northwestern wins this game. So I, th- I think Campbell's got this one wrong, but I trust – I respect, I should say, her her sticking to a system that that she has developed over the course of a year. Well, she did bet on Northwestern because uh, of the Cubs against Wisconsin. So. Oh, that's true, and she got that one right, and she got yep. that one right. Yeah, so, she's, yeah. so there's there's a little conflict here, but she's, she's, she's going to roll with the Tigers. All right, uh, the first of the playoff games, Alabama and uh, Notre Dame. This game is <laughs> this sentence tells you everything you need to know about 2020. Alabama and Notre Dame in the Rose Bowl in Arlington, Texas. <laughs> Tells you everything that you need to know about 2020 in one sentence. If I had told you on last year on New Year's Eve, hey, Alabama and Notre Dame are going to play in one of the playoff games, you'd have said, okay, I can see that. And I'd said, it's going to be the Rose Bowl. You'd have said, oh, okay. And then if I'd said, but the game's going to be played in Arlington, Texas, you'd have been like, well, hold up. What happened? Wait, I'm confused. Why is that a big deal? Well, the Rose Bowl is in Pasadena, California, every year. It's at the Rose Bowl, the actual stadium, the Rose Bowl. Uh, so why is it not there? Because of COVID. But that doesn't – okay. So they're playing the Rose Bowl. But, in... like, is that a big COVID place right now or something? Cal- Los Angeles, California? Yeah. The, the, the city – the state's basically shut down. Nothing's uh, allowed. You can't do anything. Okay, well, I haven't really been keeping up with COVID stuff because it just makes me mad, so I'm kind of behind. I understand. No, and Texas, <laughs> Texas is open, to a degree at least. And what happened was – And fans can go. Fans can go. What happened – and I give him a ton of credit for this. Some people pushed back, and I said, no, no, hold up. The Notre Dame coach, Brian Kelly, a couple weeks ago said, look, if we're going to have to go to the Rose Bowl and my players' parents aren't going to be allowed, I don't know that we want to do it. I don't know that we would accept it. We might just decline and shut it down and, or go to a different bowl game. We just might – we might not participate because it's – for a lot of guys, it's their last game. For most of the guys, it's the biggest game they'll ever play in. And if your family can't be a part of that, you got to start questioning what are you doing. To his credit, he stood up for his guys. And he said that, and some people pushed back and, oh, you, whatever. No, no, he's right. He's – Part of his job as the head coach is to advocate for his players. And he did. And so the game's going to be in, in basically Dallas. And fans, fans can attend. More importantly, for his, for his sake, uh, the players, players' parents and, and family members can attend. And if they should be able to. This is, this is silly. And so good for him for standing up and for using his platform as the Notre Dame coach to uh, – to advocate for his players. He was, it was the right thing to do. And, and this game, if, if, if this game should not be played in an empty stadium, it should be played where at least family and friends of players can attend. That's my opinion. You guys might disagree. I don't think you do, but that's, that's the way, that's the way it should be. So I, I have a lot of respect for the way Brian Kelly handled that. Yeah. I mean, you know, the 49ers are playing a home game at the Arizona Cardinals against the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. I mean, just, so, I mean, how terrible is that? So the, the COVID can it, – it can't get you in Arizona, but it can in, in, in San Francisco, in Santa Clara. It makes makes literally no sense. It's Anyway, uh, all right, Alabama is a 20-point favorite, Campbell. They're giving 20 points to uh, the Fighting Irish. You're up. Well, unfortunately, after continuously picking Notre Dame every week, and they let me down last week, so – I'm going to have to pick Alabama. 
um, you know, I'm kind of sad about it because I've stayed loyal to them through the weeks, but, yeah. you know, I'm switching it up this week. <laughs> your, your friend from high school is going to be thoroughly disappointed. Uh, about, he, about I don't that. even think he knows about this podcast. <laughs> he's going to be disappointed. He should know. Everybody else knows. How, how can he not know? All right, Greg Campbell's breaking up with the Fighting Irish this week. So uh, you've, you've, you're up. I, I'm going to have to take Notre Dame. I mean, I just, you know, I know Alabama Alabama's probably going to, you know, win by, you know, three or four touchdowns. But, you know, this is Notre Dame's last shot. I mean, if they get blown out in this uh, game, uh, I don't see them getting in the uh, the playoff ever again at, at one loss. And uh, I see them actually having to affiliate with a conference to go undefeated in a conference play to make the playoffs. So uh, I, I just think this is Notre Dame's last hurrah, and uh, we'll see if they can't keep it close. But I wouldn't be shocked to uh, see Alabama just, you know, maybe uh, 45-10, you know, maybe something like that. But uh, we're going to try to try to pick up a game on her and, and, and t- uh, take our uh, friends from high school team uh, in the Notre Dame Irish. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with Campbell here. I think Alabama wins big. All right, uh, the other playoff game is uh, the Sugar Bowl which is this year still in New Orleans, so thank goodness. It's Clemson giving seven and a half points to Ohio State, so the ACC champ and the Big Ten champ meeting in New Orleans, probably for the right to play Alabama in, uh, in a few days. What do you think, Campbell? Um, I literally know nothing about either of these. I'm just going to go with Clemson because Megan Bundren is this might go to Clemson. So, you know, if you tuned in to the Megan Bundren show on Christmas night, then you would know who that is. But I'm just going to go with Clemson. All right. This is a battle of, of two top quarterbacks to uh, maybe the first two picks in the in the 2021 NFL draft. Are you aware of either quarterback? No. No. Okay. Trevor Lawrence <laughs> doesn't mean anything to you? No. Okay. You know, Greg. <laughs> at the, at the I know end, who Trevor Lawrence and uh, Josh Fields is, but uh, you know, um, it should be a really good game. And all honestly, I, um, it's hard to uh, uh, not take a touchdown here just because you just. I feel like a field goal is going to win this game, or whoever has the you know the last possession. So I think it's going to be a really good game. I know that Ohio State's only had you know five or six or. Is it five or six games that they've played? Six games. They're six and oh, six and oh. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it should be a really entertaining game. Um, I, I'm not taking away anything from Trevor Lawrence and Clemson. I know their offensive coordinator has COVID and that won't be, and he won't be able to go to the game. And um, so it's it would be kind of weird for Trevor Lawrence to be hearing a, um, you know, the particular uh, voice in your head all season long, and then all of a sudden in the biggest game uh he's not there so uh they, they might have some offense coordinator issues from him not being there but uh i just think a field goal is going to win this game so i'm going to take the points in the ohio state buckeyes okay another split there so we, now we go to the games of january 2nd uh saturday we've got the tax slayer gator bowl in jacksonville it's north carolina state and kentucky the uh wolf pack campbell a two and a half point favorite um I don't know. <laughs> um, well, we have family. A family member went to Kentucky. True. So, you know, I'm just going to go with that. Go to Kentucky. The research that's put into this, Greg, is, <laughs> it's really remarkable. Uh, <laughs> what do you, all right, she's got, she's got Kentucky, and she's going to take the two and a half points. What do you think? Well, um, I'm just going to have to go with her on this Kentucky just uh, because uh, I have some horses in Kentucky. I don't have family in Kentucky, but I have some horses in Kentucky. So uh, maybe that will be uh, a good angle for us to both uh, hit, a, hit, a, hit a winner here. Yeah, I took NC State on our picks. So I don't know. It's, it, no one's watching that game. That's, that's a rough game. A game that a lot of people in this audience will be watching. In fact, I think most of you probably will. It's the Outback Bowl in Tampa. 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern on ABC, Ole Miss and Indiana. Ole Miss, a uh, six-and-a-half point uh, underdog is what we've got the line. I think the line's jumped. For our, our sake, we're going to take six-and-a-half. Ole Miss, a six-and-a-half point underdog against Indiana in the Outback Bowl. Campbell, what do you think? Um, I'm going to go with Indiana. I've picked them a lot because of their coach, right? Is that yeah, what? yeah, the coach's daughter and you were, used to be classmates. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to stick with that. I think it works for me most of the time. So, I'm going to Indiana. 
Ole Miss so banged up, Greg. So many injuries on the offensive side. Opt outs. Elijah Moore opted out. Kenny Yaboa opted out. Braylon Sanders isn't playing. I don't know what's going to happen with Jerry and Ely. I think they're going to maybe give it a go, but I don't. I don't sense a ton of optimism. So, a lot of, a lot of. Yeah, uh, I like Indiana uh, too. It's just it's it's tough to. I mean, I think Indiana's a really good football club, and uh, you know it's a kind of a really good feel goals feel good story for 2020. And you know it was really awesome to see. You know whenever they beat Wisconsin, and he was doing the interview, and like literally every player came by. Uh, to coach Cal- Allen and, you know, uh, gave him some love. And, uh, you know, that's hard to, uh, that's hard to crack. Um, and it's hard to, um, uh, regardless of how much talent you have, on, uh, the other team has, uh, when that, when you have a, a um, you know, a niche together team like that, they're, they're on a roll. So I like Indiana a lot here. I think Indiana will win by at least three touchdowns, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah. I picked Indiana too. I think it's closer than that, but I, I'm, I'm with both of y'all. I like Indiana and I'll, I'll give those points. Uh, later on Saturday, Saturday yes, uh, the, the Fiesta Bowl in uh, Glendale, Arizona, right there in suburban Phoenix. It's Oregon and Iowa State. The uh, Ducks, a four-and-a-half-point favorite against the Cyclones, who have had one hell of a season uh, there in Ames. Campbell, what do you think? Um, I'm going to go with Iowa State. I know their coach is really good, and his name is Matt Campbell. So, you know, we share a name. Feel like that might work in my favor, so I'm going with them. Yeah, you've stuck with him for a while this year. It's not and and pretty smartly because he is he's terrific at what he does. The job he's done at Iowa State's remarkable. Their ability to keep him over the years has been impressive. Greg, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, hats off to that Iowa State program. I mean, it's uh, it's you know, come from the cellar, and it's uh, actually a really good program, and they. Um, got down early against o- Oklahoma in the in the Big 12 championship game, and you know fought back, and uh, it was end up being a really really good game. Um, maybe I can catch up a game on this one and take Oregon. Uh, hadn't seen Oregon that much, but uh, uh, you know with that being said, uh, you know they're they're they've got some athletes on each side of the ball, and uh, I think it's going to be a really good game. So uh, I'll try to catch a, catch a game on and, and take the Oregon Ducks here. All right, last one. We got the uh, the Orange Bowl in Miami. It's Texas A and M and North Carolina. This has a chance to be a pretty entertaining game as well. Texas A and M giving seven points in the Orange Bowl to the Tar Heels. Campbell, what do you think? Um, I don't really know anything about North Carolina, honestly. So got a really good quarterback who's got a chance next season. Sam Howell has a chance next season to be the the Heisman candidate probably who gets the most preseason hype. Okay, well, then we'll go with North Carolina <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> I don't know anything, so. All right, so Greg Campbell's going to take the Tar Heels. She's going to take the seven points. Are you going to lay them? Well, I, I think just, I mean, just the way Texas A&M kind of got snubbed out. I mean, I know they feel snubbed out. I mean, it, it's a tough time, a, t- a tough situation playing Alabama, your second game of the year in, in a COVID season, and, um, you know, I think they've improved uh, each game uh, throughout the rest of the year. And um, I, I say, you know, it might be Kellen Mond's going out party and they win by two touchdowns. I think it's going to be a really high scoring game. So I recommend the over. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. It should be a should be a really fun one. So uh, so you're taking Texas A&M. I will take that one. I'll try to get another one on it. Greg's going to take the Aggies. Campbell will take the Tar Heels. And um We'll come back next week, see how y'all did. We'll pick the championship game. We'll pick the NFL first round of the NFL playoffs. That will be interesting to – we'll test We'll test Campbell's NFL knowledge because she's watched a ton. Of- yeah, I have, I have none. I have none. And she's, she's probably toured a bunch of facilities, so she can get. Yeah. She has that angle, angle <laughs> too. So. Yeah, I'm going to have to find new angles to go at because uh, – Well, I never promised you this would be easy. So so I just, just told you we would – it would be fun. It will be interesting. All right, uh, so Greg, real quick again for the people uh, who want want to check you guys out this weekend and get some of the great stuff at LB's. How do they go about that? Yeah, I mean, just always call the store. Uh, we'll be open from ten to two today. Um, uh, we might be open a little bit later, just depending on how the traffic goes. Um, but we'll be closed tomorrow, and then we'll be open back up on Saturday and full tilt, ten to six, and uh, on Sunday, one to six. So hopefully, uh, getting this two thousand twenty one campaign on on track and. Uh, 
uh, be ready to go. But always call the store. I mean, I, we do have Instagram. We do have uh, Facebook. Uh, you can message us there. I'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. But, uh, you know, it's just always good to call the store. Uh, we can get you your order written down and what all you need. And if you want to come and pick it up at a particular time, we can set it over the side for you. So, but yeah, we'll have a, a lot of fresh fit, a lot of fresh fish, a lot of lane trains and everything will be stocked up. So uh, hopefully for a good weekend. Awesome. I look forward to it. So happy new year to both of you. Happy new year to everyone in the audience. Uh, I think we go into 2021 with a feeling like, Hey, can't be worse. It's got to be better. So um, happy new year. Happy 2021 to everyone. We'll be back with our first edition of 2021 next weekend. So until then, for Campbell McCready, for Greg Jones, that does it for this episode of The Butcher versus The Spin Instructor presented by LB's Meat Market. Have a great weekend. Happy new year. Talk to you soon.